Okay, so welcome to audiology in chapter one. We then talk about the field of audiology, different areas where audiologists work, and other things about the organization and the profession of audiology. Audiology is the identification of hearing loss, the differential diagnosis of hearing impairment. This means the identification of the possible cause and location of hearing loss, and the non-medical treatment of hearing impairment and balance disorders. So non-medical treatment. So the audiologist does not write prescriptions. The audiologist does not do surgeries, but the audiologist is the expert with hearing aids and rehabilitation therapy and the differential diagnosis of hearing loss, whether it's an outer ear problem, a middle ear problem, or an inner ear problem. So the audiologist is going to work with the otologist or the otolaryngologist, the medical ear doctor, just like a optometrist, the person that gives you contacts and eyeglasses, works with an ophthalmologist, the medical eye doctor. You now need a clinical doctorate. So a clinical doctorate is the AUD. A lot of other professions have also done this. There's the physical therapy doctorate, an occupational therapy doctorate, a pharmacy doctorate, so this is a clinical doctorate degree, the AUD. There are three years of coursework, followed by a fourth year externship. So in your three years of coursework, you're going to do hearing and speech science, anatomy and physiology, some speech pathology, counseling, electronic and computer science, diagnostic and rehabilitation services. And just like with speech pathology, how you do a CFY year, your fourth year is pretty much your CFY year. And most of them are paid, which is a good thing. So your fourth year of residency is equivalent to the speech language pathologist clinical fellowship year, their CFY year. It's often paid for a stipend, and you can it's like um, a medical residency. So you could go anywhere in the country to do this. Now there are some big stats on hearing loss. About 20% of Americans or 48 million people have some reported hearing loss. At the age of 65, one out of three will have hearing loss. 60% of the people with hearing loss are either in the workforce or in the educational setting. People in the workforce might show a milder form of hearing loss, but even some form of hearing loss is going to affect your work abilities. And as the hearing loss increases, unfortunately, your compensation decreases. Hearing loss can be very handicapping. Two to three out of every thousand children are born hard of hearing or deaf, and an estimated that another 30 school children per 1,000 have hearing loss. Recurrent and persistent ear infections have a substantial impact on speech and language development. So just as a hearing loss will affect your ability to do your job and get raises, having a hearing loss in the educational setting is going to affect the child's performance in school. Audiology is consistently reported as one of the most desirable professions by U.S. News and World Reports and Time Magazine. It always comes up again and again and again. Hearing loss and you know, hearing loss is always going to be part of our country with our aging population and the amount of noise exposure we we experience. You, me, and the people younger than us and older than us on a daily basis. So there's always going to be a need for audiology, and it always comes up on one of the best. Profession. So finding a career path is one thing, but finding one that won't stress you out is another. And audiologists are paid rather well. So it's like a low-stress job where you're working one-on-one -on -one to help people, so it's rewarding, and you're paid pretty well. You might want to look into it. The different fields of audiology include medical audiology, working for hospitals, physicians, or nursing homes, educational audiology, working for the deaf or hard of hearing, doing auditory training, speech reading, talking about hearing loss prevention programs, pediatric audiology, working with children and cochlear implants, industrial audiologists, working to design hearing conservation programs, measure noise levels, monitor employees' hearings. And finally, these are our professional organizations. So there's ASHA and then the American Academy of Audiology. Back when audiology and speech pathology first became um, professions after World War II, there was, ASHA was very balanced between the hearing side and the speech side. But as time has gone on and more and more speech pathologists has entered the schools, um, 
they've the ASHA has become more dominated by speech pathologists. So about 20 years ago, audi an audiologist group broke off to make their own organization because they felt that ASHA wasn't meeting their needs. So that's the American Academy of Audiology. Now the two groups often work together. There's also Frost in New York State, the New York State Speech Language Hearing Association, and the Alexander Graham Bell Society, which is great for auditory verbal therapy. Auditory verbal therapy is something you should all look into, whether you're going to be a speech pathologist or an audiologist, because it's um, a great little avenue to make yourself special. It's an extra certification that you could get if you want to work with people that have hearing loss, children in particular. And you could get this as a speech pathologist or an audiologist. And I think it's something like neat and different, something to differentiate yourself by if after you get your license in speech pathology or audiology, you go ahead with the auditory verbal therapy certificate. And that's provided through the Alexander Graham Bell Society.